This is the review for chapter nine on muscles and muscle tissue. Um, I did not schedule one for this week, but I thought I would at least record one for your um, exam three. Okay, I'm gonna skip past all of the um, learning outcomes and we're just gonna quickly go through some of the slides that are um, easier and then I'll stop and explain the ones that are um, a little more difficult. And I'll try to focus on topics that um, uh, that I know are on the exam, that are emphasized on the exam. Okay, so skeletal muscle tissue is packaged into skeletal muscles, and skeletal muscles are considered organs. Uh, skeletal muscles are the ones that we name when we exercise, um, like your biceps and your triceps. So they're actually considered organs. They are organs that are composed of cells called skeletal muscle fibers. And um, these are the longest cells of all, and they do have striations or stripes on them. So do cardiac muscle, um, muscle cells. Uh, skeletal muscle is voluntary because we can control the contraction of our skeletal muscles um, consciously. They contract rapidly, tire easily, and are powerful. All right, so keywords are skeletal, striated, and voluntary. And cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart. Like skeletal muscle, it is striated, but the contractions are involuntary. We do not um, consciously control the cardiac muscle contractions. And we find smooth muscle, this is probably the least um, well-known muscle tissue. This is found in the walls of hollow organs like the stomach, the intestines. It's found in large blood vessels. So the walls of those blood vessels are smooth muscle. Um, the urinary bladder, the airways, any tube that's going to move a fluid or air or even a solid through that tube. So if you think about all your body systems that do that, um, they are going to have smooth muscle in their walls. Smooth muscle does not contain striations, but like the cardiac muscle, it is involuntary. Keywords are visceral, because smooth muscle is found in your visceral organs, which are organs typically in your um, abdominal cavity, abdominal pelvic cavity, um, and your um, thoracic cavity. Okay, so we've got a picture here showing you um, what skeletal muscle looks like. You can see the striations. You can see how they're elongated and the nuclei. All of these are nuclei, so skeletal muscle fibers are multinucleated. The cardiac muscle fibers, you can see the striations. You can also see branching in the cardiac muscle fibers, and you can see these intercalated discs that connect the cardiac muscle fibers. And smooth muscle, as you can see, um, is, has a very smooth appearance. Okay, all muscle types, all three muscle types are um, excitable. That means they can receive and respond to stimuli. They um, can contract. That means they can shorten forcibly when stimulated. They are able to be stretched. That property is called extensibility, and they're able to recoil to resting length. That's elasticity. So those are the um, characteristics of muscle tissue, all three muscle tissue types. Functions of muscle tissue is to produce movement, not just the movement of the entire individual. Walking would be an example. Picking something up would be an example but also the movement of materials through the body, like digesting the food and the movement of the um, remaining waste throughout the digestive tract, pumping blood, um, pumping, uh, pumping blood and air, moving air through the airways. These are all examples of um, smooth muscle function. Um, pumping blood, I'm sorry, sorry. Pumping blood is cardiac, um, cardiac muscle function but moving blood through the blood vessels is also going to be smooth muscle. Okay, another uh, function of if skeletal muscle is to maintain the posture and the position of the body, to stabilize joints, to generate heat as they contract, 
Now we're going to focus on skeletal muscle, the nerve and the blood supply. Um, well, skeletal muscle, each muscle um, receives a nerve, an artery, and veins. Every muscle has a nerve, an artery, and veins. Uh, these are the connective tissue uh, sheaths or wraps that wrap around groups of muscle tissue. The outside wrap that wraps around the whole entire muscle is the epimysium. I've heard it also pronounced epimysium. That doesn't matter to me so much. Um, but it is going to be the dense, irregular connective tissue that surrounds the entire muscle. Um, it may also blend with the fascia, or it may blend with the tendons and um, the tendons that connect that muscle to bone. Now, the muscle fibers themselves are surrounded by, we'll go down to the bottom, to the endomysium. And that is composed of fine areolar connective tissue. And it surrounds, like I said, it surrounds each muscle fiber. And the muscle fibers are grouped into bundles called fascicles. The fascicles are surrounded by perimysium, which is fibrous connective tissue. And here is a picture, and you do need to know this picture. There's a matching on the exam um, where you have to know the be able to know what this picture is composed of, the composition. So um, we're, what we're looking at is the femur, and we're looking at a muscle that is attached by a tendon to the um, area in between the greater and lesser trochanter of the femur bone. So it's attached up next to the um, top of the femur bone, ba basically. And... Um, this entire muscle is surrounded by epimysium. And then you can see that groups of muscle fibers are surrounded by perimysium. And then each individual muscle fiber is this entire structure right here, which also consists of bundles. But this entire structure is a muscle fiber, and it's surrounded by endomysium. Um, muscles, when we talk about individual muscles, like biceps and triceps, each muscle attaches to the bone in at least two places. The insertion of the muscle is the attachment to movable bone. The origin is the attachment to immovable or less movable bone. So if we go back to this muscle that we're just looking at, it's attached. This is going to be the um, origin of this muscle because this is the place that does not move. It's the part that does not move. Um, that this muscle is attached to. Okay, um, attachments can be direct or indirect. That means if they're direct, um, the they don't have a uh, tendon or a connective tissue sheet like an aponeurosis, which you have between the frontal bone and the um, occipital bone of the skull. All right, and here is the same picture. <laughs> All right, this is levels of um, structure and organization of skeletal muscle. We really just looked at that. So um, now we need to look at the microanatomy, and this is definitely on your exam as well. Um, skeletal muscle fibers are long cylindrical cells that have multiple nuclei. We call them multinucleate. The muscle fiber plasma membrane has a special name. It is called the sarcolemma. The cytoplasm is called the sarcoplasm. What you should be noticing is that there are, so I can probably write to a certain extent, there are certain um, word parts like, I'll try to circle this. Uh, that didn't work. Like sarco and myo. Let's see, the other day when I was doing this, when I changed colors, it started working. So let's try that. Let's try ink color changing. So, my, uh, no, it's not working. Okay, well, anyway, um, sarco and myo are um, prefixes that are used in um, naming structures involved with muscle tissue. 
So um, they, the muscle cells also have glycosomes, which are vesicles that store glycogen, and myoglobin, which is um, a protein that stores oxygen. You've heard hemoglobin that carries oxygen. Myoglobin stores oxygen in muscle tissues. So glycosomes stores glycogen in muscle tissue, and glycogen can be broken down for into glucose whenever there's a need for that, um, when the muscle needs energy. Okay, organelles that are modified are myofibrils, the, which are just little fibers that are um, components of the, of the muscle fiber. Um, they're going to be like uh, actin and myosin, which help to create the muscle contraction. And then sarcoplasmic reticulum is the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle tissue. And it, uh, it stores, I apologize for that little interruption. I'm doing this review at home on a Saturday and I have family members and they've got things going on. So I apologize for that. But um, so I said myofibrils, we're gonna talk about some um, fibers called actin and myosin. The sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium. So keep that in mind. This is only found in muscle um, tissue. We call it endoplasmic reticulum and any other type of cells. And T-tubules are actually formed from the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma um, forms a tube that leads from the plasma membrane or sarcolemma deep into the muscle tissue. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, if I can move to the next slide. Okay, having trouble. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, myofibrils are densely packed rod-like elements. A single muscle fiber can contain thousands of myofibrils. Um, they're gonna have striations, sarcomeres, which are individual units of contraction. The myofibril is going to contain groups of myofilaments. And let me be clear, um, the myofilaments are actually what we, um, we're gonna name them actin and myosin and then troponin and um, tropomyosin. And so here you are looking at some of these structures. So surrounding the muscle fiber is the sarcolemma just the plasma membrane. Don't let this confuse you. Remember that muscle fibers do have multiple nuclei. So it's okay that there are three nuclei here. Um, and they are found on the periphery. They're found on the outside. So they're the closest structures to the um, plasma membrane. Um, so we have a plasma membrane called the sarcolemma. We have lots of mitochondria as you would expect because muscle fibers, muscle cells need um, energy. Then we have the myofibrils that are going to contain the myofilaments. Um, the myofilaments are going to be actin and myosin. We have the striations, which consist of dark A bands and light I bands. And I can tell you easy way to remember that. Some of you probably already see it. But to remember the A bands are the dark bands. Dark has an A as the second letter. And the I bands are light. Light has I as the second letter. So really, really easy to remember which are the dark and which are the light bands. We will be going over why there are dark and light bands and what the purpose is. Um, okay, so striations result from the fact that there are a repeating series of dark and light bands along the length of each myofibril. A bands are the dark regions. Remember A and remember the A in the word dark. The H zone is a lighter region in the middle of a dark A band, and the M line is the line that bisects the H zone vertically. The I bands are the lighter regions, and the I bands are going to contain the Z disc, um, which is a coin shaped sheet of proteins on the midline of the I band. And it's so much uh, easier when showing you these structures to actually to talk to you about um, them. So. The sarcomere is what we're going to look at next. You do need to know the sarcomere is the smallest contracting unit of muscle, of a muscle fiber. And it is the area between Z disc. 
So a sarcomere is going to go from one Z disc right here to the next. That will be considered a sarcomere.